And, uh, good morning, it's Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami. We have another, uh, we have a seventh Neurosurgical Super Sunday. Uh, today we have the pleasure of having Mike Carrion, the head of the uh, Nepal Neuroscience Center in uh, Bharatnagar, Nepal. And we're joined with a full panel of, uh, of people from around the world. Let's then introduce the panel first before we turn it over to Ike. Hello, Adnan. Please introduce yourself, please. Hello, good morning, everyone. I'm Adnan Mohammed, yes, neurosurgical resident in the second year, Egyptian. Nice to meet you all. Thank you for coming, Adnan. And Amna, could you please introduce yourself? Yes, Hello? we can hear you. I am Amna Ghari. I am a fresh medical student from Dow Medical College, Pakistan. Very good. Welcome, Emma and Francisco. This is Francisco. I'm a neurosurgeon in Hospital Virgen del Rocío from Seville, Spain. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, welcome, Francisco. And Salman, can you say hello, please? Hi, John. Hi, I. Hi, all of you guys. Uh, good to see that uh, this is growing and getting better and progress. Salman, you and Sergi is here. Great. Hi, guys. Welcome, Sh Shahira. Please introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Shahira Hashmi, a fresh graduate of Dow Medical College, Karachi, Pakistan. Yeah, welcome, Shahira and Slavin. Thank you. Slavin. Hello, everyone. You know Slavin. I'm from Zagreb and uh, I'm the leader of Dandy here and I'm really happy to be here for another period and Dr. Hernes Niemito. Thank you. Thank you, Slava. Yosef, can you please introduce yourself? Yosef, you're muted, so Yosef. Whoop, you're muted, Yosef. Okay, Yosef is a med student from Pakistan. I guess we'll continue on to the Russians. Can someone from the Russian... It's not Hello? quite a full... Oh, yes, hi. How you doing? Welcome back. Hi there. Okay, I, I recognize them. Okay, I welcome and it's all yours. Okay. Yeah. Uh, guys, I'm going to start screen sharing. See, uh, I was uh, I was a bit preoccupied, but I the last week, at least, uh, I had uh, more than six people asking me a lot of doubts on uh, Darlings again on the Facebook. And then uh, I've told them that I'm going to show you a cadaver dissection. So I was searching for it. Uh, fortunately, I got this cadaver dissection, which was done uh, two years back. So um, this is in my previous uh, medical college in Chituan. So I'm going to I'm going to show you this cadaver dissection, and uh, we'll go through the steps. So I'm going to share now. Okay. Okay. Mm. All right. Can you see, guys? Yes, we can. OK. So here we go. We've uh, done uh, subfacial. People call it interfacial, but it could be subfacial also, subfacial dissection. So you can see that subfacial uh, dissection there. Now, that is the root of zygoma. Uh, if I need a pitrosectomy, then I make an incision like that, I mean, around the ear. So then uh, the middle fossa approaches are always based on the root of zygoma. So here, we don't need all that. So we're going dollings, taking it all off, the temporalis muscle. Uh, 
Anybody, what, what am I doing? What point is that? That is the orbit. That is the orbit. Okay. That's a keyhole. And always in this point, you find an inferior orbital fissure. I will show you the inferior orbital fissure there. Well, we don't do this in actual cases, but uh, you can always find out the inferior orbital fissure there. And then you always have a pad of fat, large pad of fat there, with which you can uh, reconstruct a lot of defects. So you really don't need to... Uh, so I'm going to... I'm going to dissect out the periorbita completely and then dissect down to show the, uh, the zygoma. So zygomatic arch is being dissected out. This is the this is the main part of Dolenx. If you miss this, then you are not going to be able to do a good frontal orbit zygomatic approach. So, so you can see that how is the muscle coming in? You know the subfacial dissection there, and how the muscle goes in. Now the zygoma, the orbit, everything has to be nicely identified. Each has to be identified. You make your bar holes there. You make your bar. You make your bar holes there. So that is your hockey stick drilling. That is your hockey stick drilling. That's your keyhole bar hole. That's your keyhole bar hole and that's your hockey stick drilling. So the hockey stick drilling goes uh, along the zygoma. And that is your next hole. So you're going to do your craniotomy there. So this is a two-piece orbitozygomatic uh, craniotomy. A uh, one-piece is much more easier actually. But we are going to show you a two piece now. The sphenoid ridge is there. This is this is a normal tyrional uh, craniotomy, but uh, you see that's a sphenoid ridge, and you can see the beginning of the orbitomeningeal band. You can see that band there. Everybody sees this. People stop their biting there. So that is the orbitomeningeal band. So, can you see that? That is, uh, can you identify anybody? Identify what is that for me? I have taken the, the temporal floor flush so I can see this cranial nerve exiting. What is that cranial nerve? Anybody? There is another cranial nerve here going out. Yes, Three it's the optic nerve. No, 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 no. This is not no. the optic. This is no, I'm, I'm oh, sorry. V2. This is V2. V2. V2, V2, V2. For German. And, that's V2. and this will be V3 here. Okay. So uh, the optic nerve will be somewhere here. It's 11. This optic nerve will be somewhere here. So optic nerve will be here. 3, 4, V1 will be going to the superior. This is superior orbital fissure is going to come here. And that's a temporal. That's a temp. That's a, uh, behind V2. This is V3, and then after that is a Kawasis triangle. So we are uh, slowly going from front to behind. I have incised the orbitomeningeal band now, and I'm going to dissect the orbitomeningeal band. And you can see the trans. There is a superior orbital fissure. This is a superior orbital fissure. You will see all the cranial nerves. That is a anti-declinant process and I am going to dissect the anti-declinant process free now that is anti that's optic now this is the anti-declinant process so the TCM is completely intact if I cut through here the TCM here also will be intact see So you can see 
the cavern that is the gazerian ganglion and that band is the gspn gspn you don't see as a nerve if you are a good skull base surgeon if anybody tells you that the gspn is a nerve no don't believe him he has not done so that is your kawasaki triangle that is your kawasaki triangle this is exactly how you see it in the real life scenario also so that is a kawasaki triangle that is a kawasaki triangle there that is a gazerian ganglion that is a v3 there that is v2 there and that is a gspn that is a gspn that is a peters ridge and arcuate eminence will come here that is a meatal uh, that is a meatal depression iam should be coming somewhere here in this direction in this direction that is a meatal depression so you identify sometimes there is a double ridge so you don't want to be fooled so you always see where is the dura you trace the dura you always see the dura so you have a gspn there you have your lateral to gspn you have a eustachian tube underneath the gspn you will have your uh, carotid and that is your v3 that is your kawasaki triangle so generally i i drill this v3 and i take this gazerian ganglion up and i can drill beneath beneath that triangle also so for petroclavial meningiomas and all i, I prefer this is much more easier than a, a retrosigmoid if the petros petroclavial meningioma is in the correct location uh, way anteriorly so that i am showing them where is the gspn and where is the iam coming what is the angles what are the angles right now we are back to the cavernous sinus again you can see v1 v2 v3 that is the fourth nerve that is the third nerve third and the fourth nerve and this is the cavernous sinus this is the cavernous sinus and you can see the carotid c4 carotid there that is a c4 carotid and underneath that is a sphenoid sinus and you can see one more nerve coming medial to the v1 lateral to the carotid and medial to the v1 what nerve will that be what nerve will that be just medial to the v1 anybody that is the sixth nerve medial to v1 lateral to carotid just lateral to carotid that nerve is sixth nerve so that is fourth nerve that is third nerve optic nerve carotid third nerve sorry third nerve fourth nerve that is a the tentorial edge that is a tentorial edge which is actually related to the related to your distal dural ring so cavernous aneurysms if you cut the distal dural ring and then you shave off this you are reaching the c3 vertical carotid each of these triangles can be opened once you uh once you take care of the tcm but if you want to go inside you have to inject glue so that is a that is your acp resection acp is being taken off now drilled off the last part of acp is taken out between the optic nerve and uh, and the carotids so that is a that is the last bit of uh this acp the optic strut is also being taken out you can see the carotid oculomotor membrane the carotid oculomotor membrane you can see and if you take off that carotid oculomotor membrane you will see the 
carotid, the C3 carotid. That is a that is a sharp tooth of the uh, ACP. That is a C3 carotid. This is uh, the vertical segment is in the cavernous the cavernous segment. So the cavernous aneurysms are generally situated in, around here. So you can go medial to the third and the fourth now, and then you can uh, get into this space. If the aneurysm neck is in the in C3, this is an aneurysm which can be clipped by the modified or the even the classical Dolling's approach. Classical Dolling's approach is a little bit more. Uh, um, I will say traumatic. It is uh, because TCM is not preserved. It's uh, really bloody. So, but uh, modified dolens where the TCM is preserved, this is a straightforward approach. I mean, for a skull based surgeon, right? So we are just seeing the anatomy. We are shaving off the tent. You can see the third nerve entering in into the oculomotor trigon there. That is the uh, intradural. So the third nerve is entering into the oculomotor trigon. And you can see the intracavernous third nerve now. You can see the entry, entry point of the third nerve there. That is a fourth nerve. That is a Parkinson's triangle. That is a Parkinson's triangle between the fourth nerve and the V1. And that is your that is your Kawase's triangle. We will learn. So you can see V1, V2, V3. You can see GSPN and you can see the Peters Ridge here. And you will see the, the IAM here. You can dissect further on the GSPN. It goes underneath the superior petrosal sinus. You can cut the superior petrosal sinus. Clip it, clip the superior petrosal sinus, cut the superior petrosal sinus, cut the tend and connect it to the connect it, uh, connect this this fossa to the posterior fossa. And after taking this off, you'll get a huge space. So most of the sphenopetroclavial meningiomas, if they are soft, um, it is a uh, um, I will not say easy to take it out, but you can take it out. Uh, it's difficult, but you can take it out. Much. Uh, much better access than a uh, retrosigmoid. So that is your uh, area of the laminar terminalis. That is your optic chiasm. So that is your third now going into the interpedangular fossa. That is your carotid. Different windows. Stock. Region of the stock. So that is your entire uh, Dolling's window. That is your Dolling's window. And you can combine it with the Kawase window to get a huge exposure. Well, thank you. So again, I want to show you in in a live case the same thing. We have seen it different times. So again, the same thing being done. Orbital meningeal band being excised, cut. Sharp dissection of the orbital meningeal band. Sharp dissection of the orbital meningeal band. Feeling.
peeling. Yeah, peeling is, uh, you know, as uh, the ladies peel, you know, for the face mask and peeling and all that. This is peeling, okay? Once you cut, peeling is easy. If you don't cut, no peeling. Sharp dissection first and then peeling. If you uh, peel from the beginning, the plane which you peel will be completely different. Then you will get into cavernous science. And in a live case, if you get into cavernous sinus, it is not it is not pleasant, you see. So peeling now. It's peeling. Kleiner process being outlined. That is a Kleiner process, root. C3. Carotid, clinoid process completely taken out. C3 carotid now. That is a carotid. Now dural opening. Optic now. Very tight brain here. Carotid, optic now. Posterior clinoid process. Here you don't need to drill the posterior clinoid. This is P1. P1. Superior cerebellar artery. Carotid. Membrane of liliquis is open. That's a PCP. You put the drain and come out. Right. Thank you very much. Questions, if there is anything, please ask. Okay, I thank you, thank you very much uh, for your excellent presentation and open the floor up to uh, comments or discussion. Slavin, would you like to comment or question or uh, have any questions for I? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to comment that you should never cheat on a test because uh, Francisco was there uh, trying to unmute and he was showing two fingers and I, w I went optic without thinking. So <laughs> it's, it's my, my... Okay, Francisco, uh, although can, I, you, can I, I you unmute? It wasn't, so. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> well, I'll try, I'll, uh, try to unmute now, on Francisco. I'll try, I'll try to help you. Go ahead, try to unmute now. Can you do it? Oh, you can, I guess. Uh, yeah, it seems as he cannot uh, unmute, yeah. but I must. I'm yeah, yeah. a witness, you know. Oh, there you go. There go ahead, Francisco. All the answers. <laughs> we can hear you, Francisco. Yeah, I just wanted, uh, wanted to. I was I was trying to say V two with a finger. Yeah, V two. I, I understand. <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. Do you have any questions or comments for I, uh, Francisco? Uh, no, I found presentation and uh, very thankful. Okay. Well, I'm, you know, I don't know if you introduce yourself, uh, Francisco. Do you know? Do you know why? Uh, no, I, I I never knew him. Um, uh, now I know he's a excellent neurosurgeon from from Nepal. Okay. Yes, he's a big proponent of sister and ostomy. And I'm sure you'll be hearing about that. Um, and I'd like you to introduce uh, I, you to a neurosurgeon from the Canary Islands, Kevin. Kevin, could you say hello yeah. to I? Hello. Good afternoon. Can, can you can you see me? Yes, we can see Just you. We can I, hear you. Yeah, because I have any problem to connect today. Hello. Good morning. My name is Kevin. I'm from to Canary Island. For me, the presentation from IPA is perfect so i have uh, i have not uh, any question okay i put uh, kevin is interested possibly in uh, visiting uh, nepal um, yes hopefully hopefully and uh, hopefully you'll get to know him and i highly suggested it to, to kevin yes yes because we have uh, six months to to visit another hospital and to learn different uh, speciality uh, from 
uh, neurosurgery. Okay. So I am interested to visit uh, this hospital in Nepal with Yipe. But uh, if I have uh, any opportunity for me, it's perfect. Okay, sure. Well, I guess we can talk later about that. Right, I? I you're muted. You're muted, I. You, you are welcome. You're very welcome to come here. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, he'd like to do that. I highly recommend it. Um, okay, any other questions? Uh, any comments or questions from uh, the Russian contingent? It's quite sparse today. Hello, Russia, come in. Coming in. <laughs> okay, that, coming. there's movement there. Thank you very much, Professor Cherian. Uh, one question: uh, How we can how we can dissection membrane of from the perineal approach? I didn't get you. Dissection of membrane of liliquist from the perineal approach. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, the membrane of liliquist is. Uh, the membrane of Lilliquist is something between the anterior, uh, the anterior systems and the posterior system. So it's something between your optic and carotid, as well as your carotid and third nerve. So uh, to section it, you have to understand that there are two major arteries running right underneath it, which is uh, your PCOM and your anterior choroidal running between the optic and the optic and the carotid so it will come into this window so you have to be a bit careful there uh, so if you know the position if you irrigate frequently you will see these arteries for sure and you can section it without any problem also you can follow the third nerve and keep cutting the arachnoid into the interpedicular system you can also if your optico carotid uh, window is too small then you can use the lateral carotid window, which is uh, lateral to the carotid, and you can follow the third nerve. Incising the arachnoid of the third nerve, and then you will reach the interpedangular system where your uh, basilar quad is. Mm -hmm. So you can approach either way. Uh, the angle is different. Uh, sometimes you can go, if you are going supraorbital, then also you will need to do the posterior clinoidectomy in this case. But even then, in one of these windows, you can reach uh, the basilar quad. So um, I don't think it is a very straightforward. I, it took me some time to figure out how to, uh, I mean, how to section it properly. But if you go between these two windows and be careful, you will definitely, you can section it. Right, thanks, Ayip. Okay, any, any more comments or questions uh, from... Uh the Pakistani students, any comments or questions from Amna or Shahira? No. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's no problem. Okay, another video, comment from uh, Russia. Video about dissection of membrane. I didn't get you. Have you video about dissection of membrane deliquist? Yeah, there are so many videos. I have 700 videos. So if you want, you can go to look in the YouTube. You can look in the YouTube under Raju Charyan. Uh, you can mm -hmm. just type Raju Charyan on YouTube and uh, then you will get many videos. So you type Systenostomy on YouTube, you will get many videos. So if you want, maybe I can show it again sometime. You know, I've actually, you have a page dedicated to you on Neurosurgical TV. Neurosurgical TV slash IPE. We, we, have, yeah, we have a lot of your uh, cystinostomy videos on that link. And I'll send it also to uh, the Russian contingent. Okay. Um, okay. Adnan, any questions or comments? Are you still there, Adnan, from Egypt? <clears throat> Okay, I guess we're ready. We'll, we'll just sing directly to Yuha. Uh, is Yuha ready, Ipe? Yeah, yeah, Yuha is ready. Okay. I'm just. Uh...
Okay, very good, Yosef. You got back. You had room. That was. More. Thank you for yeah. giving up your seat temporarily. Thank you very much. <laughs> John, we, we need another link. No, no, the same link, same link. This is, uh, we're gonna continue on with uh, Yuha's presentation. I believe he's gonna talk about brain tumors. Okay. Before you start, you are like, how are you doing? You are. I'm fine. I'm fine. So, I'd like to introduce you to the panelists before you start. Okay. Uh, okay. I try to find my videos now. Okay. Jonas? Jonas? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> John? Mm, doesn't so. Mm. We can show anything. Yeah, yeah, I know. Mean, so. No, I think. No, I think. This one, can I begin? Or? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, sorry, I had to <coughs> search for the videos. I will show three cases of posterior fossa meningiomas and uh, I begin from below. Okay, let, let me start formally. I'll introduce you, Yuha, and uh, we'll go around and introduce the panel first, okay? Yeah, after that we'll screen share. Okay. Yeah, let me know when you're ready, Yuha. We'll edit all this out. Yeah, so I, I will... Uh, show you three cases of posterior fossa meningiomas one uh, for a magnum meningioma one cerebellopontine meningioma one clivus meningioma so i will show uh, rather long uh, long videos so you see the details details also this surgery so it will take around 45 minutes maybe 40, okay. 40 let me just introduce the panelists first okay you are thank you thank you hello anna could you say hello to you please hello. Adnan, are you still there? Mm, I guess not. Okay, I am not. Could you please fill, say hello to Dr. Hernandez Niemi? Hi, my name is Amna Hori. I am from Pakistan, and I'm a fresh medical graduate from Dalmen University of Health Sciences. Yeah, well, welcome, Amna. And Francisco, could you say hello to Dr. Hernandez Niemi, please? Hello, you had This is Francisco from Seville. Happy to hear you. Thank you. And Kevin, could you say, uh, introduce yourself to Yuha, please? Hello, good afternoon, Yuha. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm from Canary Island. 
and I want to participate in this conference and to learn of you. Welcome from the Canary Islands. Shahira, could you please uh, introduce yourself to Yuha? Oh, well, you're muted, Shahira. You're muted. You're muted. Unmute yourself. Oh, okay, could you hear me now? Yes, we can, can hear you. Can you hear now. me now? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. Hi, Dr. Yuha. I'm Shahira from Dow Medical College. I'm a fresh graduate. Welcome, Shahira. In Slavin? Pakistan. Yeah. Welcome, thank Shahira. You. Slavin? Hello. Uh, I'm Slavin from Zagreb, and I'm happy to hear another one in of the great uh, Dr. Yuha's. Uh, lectures. Thank you so much. Thank you, Slavin. And Yusuf, could you please introduce yourself to Yuha? Hi, Dr. Yuha. I am a final year medical student from Dow Medical College. Looking forward to hear you. Thank you. Well, welcome. And the Russian contingent. Hello, it's Russia. It's Federal Center of Neurosurgery. We're happy to see you, Professor Hanisemi. You're welcome. Welcome on the Russian continent. Thank you. Okay, you are, it's all yours. Okay. Let me yes. go. Yes. Oh, the presentation, so. Yeah. Where to go? I'm screen, screen sharing now, guys. Okay. No. Yeah. Can you okay. see? Can yes. you see, guys? We can, yeah, we can see it. We can see it. So this is uh, for a magnum meningioma, 81 years old patient, and has uh, tetraparesis, slight tetraparesis, and these are the symptoms. An old patient, of course. This is Parkman's position, and I make the approach here rather low. So it is rather a suboxital approach, rather low. I used to do this approach under microscope, also from skin beginning. Why? Because there are extremely important structures, structures uh, at the foramen magnum, vertebral artery. Here you have bleeding from emissary vein, best to be stopped by some uh, hemostat pushed inside the you know, emissary vein hole. Oh, then I uh, use also glue Sometimes bone wax also there, and these curved retractors are extremely good in the lateral suboccipital approach or posterior fossa approaches. So I, I like to use them, curved retractors. Yeah, and uh, then under the microscope, I open, open straight the muscles. So you could, of course, spend a lot of time dissecting the muscles, yeah, but I have found it very practical and fast to dissect the uh, uh, muscles with this is monopolar cutting cutting power and then cleaning all the time and palpating palpating here this is right right so this is a uh, Uh, now you see terrible bleeding coming from large vein. How to stop, stop that? I push hemostat there inside, coagulate to shrink the vein, and then I push glue there. So this is one of the possible methods. If you have heavy bleeding there, you should take take the head higher, but here we could manage that well. And I like to do everything under microscope because you see the bleeding point very well and then your hemostasis is appropriate. And now I'm searching for vertebral artery here. So we are on the, on the left side and searching for vertebral artery. I palpated the C1 arch and now Still again bleeding, again, again bleeding, condyla emissary vein. So, bleedings, bleedings. So, you have to take care. Don't go forwards if you have bleeding. So, otherwise, your surgery is not clean and nice. This is hemostat, push there, and then 
So you see that uh, I know that the main part of this uh, <coughs> video is opening and there are tricks in opening. So if you just show the two more uh, extirpation, then you are not showing everything. So you see, I have high magnification. I'm doing the craniotomy here, very small craniotomy to the foramen magnum. I'm doing under microscope. This side cutting craniotome. And then I have a very small bone plate, which I first some holes for Dura tenting sutures. And then I drill more bone, and then I take the bone out and drill. <clears throat> On the left side, I drill for a magnum open with diamond drill, carefully drilling. And uh, you see that I'm not using here a lot of uh, <clears throat> uh, water because I want to, at, uh, with the drilling, the hem <coughs> a good hemostasis is achieved. So this is what we call hot drilling. Drilling with a diamond drill, so you have, at the same time, extremely good hemostasis in the bone. So, a little bit lateral parts are now removed, and uh, I go laterally here. How far? I always say that enough far, and uh, it depends on the on the lesion what you are taking out. I never make standard approaches, so tailored approaches. Yeah, hemostasis, and then now opening of the dura. I open the dura here before removing all the bone, just to see the situation intradurally. And I use many times rather plump schizos. This is a regular dura schizos because it doesn't hurt hurt uh, intradurally the structure. So it is uh, good to open that way and hemostasis all the time at the uh, uh, uvular tubercle, and now after opening the dura partially, I drill still more of the uvular tubercle because I noted I need a little bit more removal. And using the garrison ronger here, after thinning the bone with diamond drill, I remove more bone enough laterally to remove the two more totally. And, uh, and then more drilling to remove bone, but at the same time also to stop uh, stop the bleeding, hemostasis, hot drilling under microscope. <coughs> okay, and then I open more. This is the ligament here, and. Uh, open more dura, and then when removing for a magnum mening meningioma, you have to have extremely strong, tight sutures here. So you will see that I will put extremely tight sutures, and then we have the tumor. We can see the tumor soon. Well, now it looks very confusing. But now we see the tumor, and we are extremely, we have a very good approach to the tumor, for a magnum tumor. So this is ligamentum lenticulatum. I cut here yeah, now, you see that I can, I can move the tumor. Tumor is hard, so it's difficult to make in small pieces, so maybe I should cut it. I coagulate the tumor and stop the, stop the bleedings around. Bleedings look very large because uh, there's high magnification and I manipulate the tumor all the time now. Now I should, I think I should cut the tumor in P 
pieces. You see, this is microschism. It looks extremely large, large under high magnification. I manipulate the tumor, push it downwards, and uh, cut it in pieces because the tumor is uh, hard. So coagulate, tumor, orientate here, and make it avascular. Where is the tumor attached? It is laterally attached and anteriorly the feeders are coming from there, but of course in that kind of uh, tumor, very hard tumor, it is not so vascular tumor. So main difficulty is here, of course, that the consistency of the tumor is very, very hard, so you have to make it in small pieces. I'm using here schizos, mechanical forces to make the tumor smaller. I think Kusa would not bite anything here. So I seldom use Kusa in tumors, only in intramedullary tumors and uh, some gliomas. So now we go forward in making the tumor in small pieces. The manipulation looks very much here because it's a very high magnification. So and it looks that there's a lot of violence, but it is not, not so. So small feeders, coagulated, cut. You have to be very careful not to take a artery, it might go to middle of Longata here. So you have to be completely sure that it's going inside the tumor. And now I take the tumor with tumor forceps, cut, coagulate more, cut more. And uh, then the tumor is coming, 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 come on. Oh, now I should to clean the field. I should clean the field. Oh, it looks not good. Not good. And this is a Doppler. I'm searching for vertebral artery. And coagulate attachment to the dura. base of the tumor laterally and anteriorly. Now, beginning to do hemostasis here. Laterally, I push hemostat here. And I'm not so happy with the anatomy here. I asked the operator to clean the field. The tumor is out now. And you see that uh, I make the hemostasis there, laterally. Use large pieces of the hemostat, pushing them laterally to the base of the tumor. And uh, I also cover the neural defect with the large hemostat and then then the bone plate is <coughs> use blue here. You may ask if there's a CSF leak. No, there's no CSF leak. So this is very safe, safe and good method. So this is postoperative. You see the tumor has been taken out and the patient did very well and had her uh, Tetraparesis symptoms gone. So then we take a next posterior fossa tumor. This is a cerebral pontine angel, angle meningioma.
So around one fifth of the meningiomas are located in the posterior fossa infratentoria. So I have done around 1,400 meningiomas, so you can count how many infratentoria are then. And this is uh, cerebellopontine meningioma, rather high. Again, I make a back bench position. There was a nevus in the in the neck, and the patient asked to remove it at the same time. So the incision is a little bit different according to the nevus location. And this is now the right side, and the the opening is higher, higher. In the former case, it was a foramen magnum meningioma, so we made a low opening and we went close to the foramen magnum and where the artery is so carefully opening. And here we do a, <coughs> make a higher opening, two retractors, and then one burr hole and detach the dura here, and then we make lateral suboccipital approach here. This is retrosigmoid approach. I make one bull hole there and then two cuts laterally and then drill laterally the bone partially like that and then break the plate away. So this is the retrosigmoid approach, bone plate broken away, and then laterally drilling of the bone away, putting a cream <coughs> around, around the, and then, <coughs> then opening the dura laterally, you, you may open differ differently, you may open, open <coughs> only very laterally, straight incision, but I like to do it that way because you, have, you get better hold on Dura with the stitches. And this is what the dissection, dissecting the inside the space, and now we came immediately to the large tumor. And, uh, you obviously write seven and eight nerves, facial, statoacousticus, and then below that, nine, ten, and eleven. And as you know, I'm using cottons without strings. So, because here, especially in posterior fossa, the strings. Things might be go around the cranial nerve, so I don't like them. So I use cottons like that. And now the tumor seems to be rather soft, so I can suck it, manipulate. It's coming in larger pieces. <coughs> Maybe we can go a little bit forward here. All the time I Use also water dissection here and uh, draw pieces with uh, two more forceps out and also suck all the time and dissect with the left hand with the sucker. And here, cleaning the field, dissecting with water again, and then coagulating two more feeders, cutting with microscissors, and the last piece of tumor is coming out. Now I should clean the field up. It looks dirty, the field now dissecting between the cranial nerves. And then I put hemostasis here <coughs> uh, on the brainstem. Brainstem, and it helps 
infer the dissection. Now I take the cotton salt and the anatomy is getting more clear again. Give water, water, clean the anatomy. And then uh, extremely careful hemostasis now. now. Especially posterior fossa, if you have postoperative hematomas, then the patient might deteriorate extremely fast. So you have to have extremely good hemostasis. Always good hemostasis, but some areas extremely careful hemostasis. So even the smallest bleeding taken, and then <coughs> with the help of the hemostat pushed on the brainstem, checking everywhere, there's a small arterial bleeding. Small artery are bleeding. Taking that carefully. Now, now clean the field, clean the field. There's a, there was a big tumor, so there's a large area to cover with the hemostats. And, uh, so she can do differently, but I, I learned to like this hemostat. And here you see the post-operative pictures next day. Total extubation of the tumor. And then we go to the third case. And it was a, a Clivus meningioma. <clears throat> so you see a large or medium-sized meningioma and it's growing from the clivus mm -hmm. and partially from the spetrosum. And my principle is usually that I, I do the uh, lateral tumors I do in the park bench position and midline tumors in sitting position. This is again, this is left side opening under the microscope and as I mentioned uh, important structures at the cranial the cervical junction. So this, this is the vertebral artery, so you have to take very good care of it. And one of the uh, important things is here the palpating finger to find the C1 arch and then Doppler for identification of the vertebral artery, so about the C1. And here you, this is the fatty triangle, see here you have to be very careful, very careful. So if you go too low, then you have a lesion in the, the first in the venous plexus around the vertebral artery and then also in the vertebral artery, so carefully doing it. I like to do it under microscope and uh, with the help of Doppler, so we have to sure, uh, sure where the vertebral artery is running. Then a small plate is lateral suboccipital craniotomy is done, so you see that this clivus meningioma is approached to retrocyte mode. Sigmoid approach, simple approach, fast approach, very a traumatic approach. It doesn't take half a day to do the approach. It is done in half an hour. So I think uh, the trend in taking also skull-based tumors out is that you can go to small, simple approaches without losing all your energy in doing the craniotomy. And here, dura is opened again. Similar to the case of, of foreign magnum meningioma, rather low approach because we have to go also rather low to the tumor, the tribal tumor. These are Tenting sutures here.
and uh, movement is coming all the time. I have a, a hypoplosal nerve. Movement in the picture is coming that I'm using a mouthpiece. And uh, why I'm using mouthpiece in the microscope? Because it makes the surgery so much faster. You save 40% of your time. 40% of the time, you're now cutting arachnoid around the lower cranial nerves. And uh, here, listed 9, 10. 11, 9 and 10 are the most important cranial nerves for human life because if you have lesion in them, so the patient is up to aspirate and may die after operation. So you have to take utmost care of these nerves. And also when you wake up the patient, you have to check carefully if they are functioning or not, even anatomically intact so before extubation. So here the tumor is coming lower part of the tumor is seen here, dissecting away from the lower cranial nerves. And then I go with pipola inside the tumor, coagulate the surface. And uh, all the time manipulate the tumor, cut with microschisos, the opening bigger. And I go laterally and anteriorly because the feeders are coming from there. So you have to always go to the feeders of the meningioma first. Then you have a dry tumor. And here we know that the feeders are coming from the attachment from clivus and pet of petrosum. And here. I take, uh, I use a uh, pipola again, that was a schizo and tumor forceps also could be seen. But main time I work all the time with sucker and pipola and then schizos. And here I go laterally to the base of the tumor, to the base of the tumor, because when you have the, the base cut, and coagulate it, and the tumor is, is uh, dry. And you can draw it away, all the time working away from the brainstem. So coagulating tumor and then pushing it laterally away from the brainstem, shrinking the tumor, making it uh, hollow. Cleaning the field also insecting the water between tumor and brainstem ponds. And uh, I push the uh, forceps inside the tumor and use them like a, as a fork to retract tumor away from the brainstem. And all the time working between training and nerves and shrinking the tumor, manipulating, manipulating, drawing it. Come on, not too much violence here. Carefully under high magnification, shrinking the tumor and taking small parts away, debulging the tumor, then cleaning the field with water dissection, dissecting the tumor away from the brainstem and as mentioned all the time, away from the brainstem, working away from the brainstem. In this tumor there's a good cleavage plane. So you see there's a good cleavage plane. I put cottons there also and coagulate the surface of the tumor. Now I think I should cut the tumor in two pieces so to get it slowly out. Coagulating the surface now, we slowly get the surface that was against pons, compressing pons, we get the surface here and then we coagulate it and shrink it and uh, taking good care of the arteries here. Here is the artery, this is, don't, don't, don't take it, this important artery. 
small artery close to the brainstem. You should dissect it carefully. And here we see the basilar artery below the basilar artery in all its length. It was attached to the tumor. In many times it looks in the pictures that the basilar artery is inside the tumor, but uh, it is not so. There is a small sulcus and you can dissect it away. So here, basilar artery in all its lengths. And you should have to take care also the, for the perforators of the basilar artery. So now I cut the tumor in smaller pieces. And all the time, dissect the tumor away from brainstem, away from basilar artery, or away from pons. Shrink the tumor. And now you see that the, I have made the tumor smaller, there are smaller pieces, and I can coagulate the remnant of the base, cut, and so slowly get rather big pieces of the tumor to be born out. I can draw them slowly out, but you should. Always be extremely careful when you draw parts of tumor or arteriovenous malformation out. So there's always one vessel left. And here I coagulate still the base of the tumor, meningioma, to get all the feeders and to get the tumor part loose under high magnification. And uh, I think the, the big nerve here is the uh, trigeminal nerve above. Again, coagulating the tumor base laterally, anteriorly, the clivus. And slowly, the big parts of the tumor are born through the windows between the cranial nerves. Here, a very big tumor part is born. and making this tumor smaller with microschisos. And again here, very small but important artery under high magnification. So you should never take them before you see that they are going to the tumor. Mainly they are going around the tumor and feeding the brainstem and pons. So here. Working between cranial nerves, are important arteries. Tumor is slowly taken out, slowly and slowly, so it doesn't take whole day, just a few hours. So, big pieces of tumor are coming out now. And 
what is this author? I think it's Aika. And now, laterally coagulating, anteriorly coagulating the base, carefully destroying the tumor there, taking tumor out, coagulating. There is an angle if you don't work. And here you should use ice hockey forceps. So to go behind the corner to coagulate all the base of the tumor, otherwise you left tumor there easily, easily. This is the experience. So using ice hockey forceps, like ice hockey club, and then cutting all the time tumor remnants, coagulate the tumor remnants away. And uh, again, extremely good hemostasis. And this is the result, and this is, you see, very good, nicely looking postoperative MRI. So this were the cases I wanted to share you. So posterior fossa meningiomas at different levels, for a magnum meningioma, cerebellopontine meningioma, and then clivus meningioma. The last one, technically most difficult, and uh, without good surgery, you will have uh, many deficits in the patients and the outcome usually good, but you might have, you might have severe complications if you make errors there. So I cannot come back to the screens. <clears throat> Share, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Okay, okay, but I, I don't find the yeah, I went somewhere. I don't find the the place for screen sharing now. So I have to stop now because uh, I cannot find. Yeah, I went with the patient. So I I thank you very much for your. If you have any questions, I can hear and answer your questions. But I can I cannot find the way to screen sharing now. Yes. Thank you very much, Professor Yuha, for another representation series uh, and I would like to ask members of the panel I'm sure they have some questions so please uh, uh, you have the opportunity to ask now maybe our team from Russia has some remarks yes Salavat is coming hello professor my name hello. is Salavat I have one question uh, about retrosigmoid approach. What landmarks do you use as your sinus, sigmoid sinus, and their junction? I didn't understand the question. So, retrosigmoid approach. So, you make a lateral suboccipital approach. I make it in backbends position and uh, straight incision and uh, Make one bull hole, like was shown, two cuts, and then drill the base laterally, and then uh, crack the bone plate out, and then drill more laterally. To the uh, in most cases, you should drill so that you see the margin of the sinus, sinus, the transverse sigmoid, sigmoid sinus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, now it's coming master of scheme share. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. okay, you can, you okay. can continue. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Some more questions? Okay. Any more questions, please? Uh, maybe Yusuf has some remarks or uh, or Kevin or uh, Shahira? Yeah, the presentation was great, Dr. Yuha. Uh, wish to see more of them. And uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Yusuf. 
Uh, the presentation was absolutely amazing, Dr. Yuha. And no, I don't have any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you for attending. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Professor, it seems that uh, your presentation was quite clear. I see the Russian team is coming to the stage. Professor Hanisimi, and one more question. Uh, what do you use for CSF uh, sealing? Uh, careful closing, but you saw that I'm using hemostats and then uh, tissue glue a lot. Tissue glue, so I never had difficulties mm -hmm. uh, with CSF leak. So uh, this is a usual question, and uh, I, in my practice, of course, the rounds were closed by experienced uh, neurosurgeons, fellows, and the microscope. So. I think this is one of the important points, points that you close at the microscope, you have a very good good uh, closer and then you take good care of the dura def deficit. But I never, uh, uh, as the old classic style that you speak about watertight closer, but I never, never have done it. I have used hemostats and glue to seal the defect exactly. And I, I never had difficulties with CSF leak from the round. And, and I'm very happy. Thank you. Yes, uh, Professor Cherian looks very neat in the back. Uh, I, I, you have some, maybe. Uh -huh. I have a meeting. It's, you have a meeting, yes, it looks like that. Well, well, thank you for this, another really super Monday. And I am really happy to be part of this series, which I think is really forwarding the overall base of knowledge in the world of neurosurgery. And uh, thanks again for all the presenters. Thank you very much. Cherian and Dr. Hernes Niemi. And uh, thank you so much for, for giving us the opportunity to learn from you. Although we are distant, we are, doing, we are using the best of the new technologies. So, so any closing you. remarks? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Dr. Jerry. Is any clo closing remarks from you? Well, um, as, I've, as you have seen, I mean, somebody asked about the CSF uh, leak. Um, it almost always uh, never happens in post refosa uh, unless you have really bad technique. Of course, I mean, if you open into a mastoid cell or if you open into something which is unwarranted, yes, that can happen. But usually, if you if you close uh, even without watertight technique it never happens so we we also do this and i never do watertight closure i do not uh, uh, we used to do earlier but we don't uh, do watertight closure so there is no problem mm -hmm. thank you again <laughs> okay thank you all again uh, shahira you wanted to say something or it was it just a cough no it was just a cough sorry Okay, okay. Thank you all for attending. Again, it is it is a true privilege to uh, end this conference and uh, we will meet you for the next one uh, exactly in one week. So uh, have a great meeting, Dr. Cherry, and thank you for everything thank to you, you, Dr. Yuha and others, and, and have a pleasant Sunday. Thank okay, you, everybody. Goodbye to all of you. From, goodbye. Thanks.